Welcome to the True Connections Recovery Podcast. I'm Brigham Elton. I am a pornography and sexual addiction counselor. We are going to help others to overcome pornography use, sexual abuse, and sexual fear by chasing healthy sexuality and being aware of the messages that are being sent to us sexually all around us. At times, these topics are hard to talk about, but our goal is to promote conversation and to help individuals feel understood and to help you feel like you're not alone. I'm so grateful you've chosen to be with us today. Talking about romantic relationships, the first section after all of those values question is called your child's first relationship. I think this is a phenomenal time for you to establish patterns of how you're going to treat a relationship or if there are rules that need to change. There's a couple things that she points out, right? In the first paragraph, she talks about children like to imitate adult behavior, and these crushes are harmless and generally based more on imagination than in reality. They are often forgotten within a few weeks' time. As your child grows, these crushes will become more real. Again, like a child is trying to be like their parents. They're trying to be an adult. And that's the verbiage that they know, right? That like so-and-so is my girlfriend or my boyfriend or it's who I like or it's who I love. Like that's the relationships that they witness, especially when they're in your home. Like they're witnessing that between you and your partner. And so most of the time it's just their verbiage and it's very, very harmless. Then it starts to talk about like the first steady relationship when someone's actually in a significant other partnership. Um, It has this question, what age do you think it's okay for her to have a steady boyfriend? At what age will you allow her to go on unsupervised dates? Having these boundaries set previously will help it feel like you don't hate their partner choice, right? We want our child to believe that we trust in their ability to choose someone. But if when they choose someone, we create all these new restrictions, they're going to think that we don't trust their choice. But if those are their previous, that really makes it easier for that partnership to not feel like it's the enemy, right? Um, If you give plenty of time for them to process and digest those rules about dating, it's going to be a lot easier, especially if that conversation has just been established before you actually get to that pattern. And so I would try to hedge this early, um, like 12, 13 years old, like I would be trying to talk about like, these are the rules for being in a significant other relationships. It also at the bottom here of page 120 gives some signs that a relationship is more serious. One thing is increasing need for privacy, especially when they like talk about it, right? If there's this like hesitancy and defensiveness, then there's probably things going on outside of your value system especially when you know your child's normal level of openness. Seeming angry or embarrassed when you ask questions about the person, right, where there's like a really strong emotional tie. Acting moody and upset one day, then giddy the next, or other behavior that signifies that their emotions are very, like, involved in the relationship and aren't as consistent as normal. Like, those are some signs to look for that, like, hey, this is more serious maybe than I thought. Um... One thing that I have really like here is on this second page, 121, it says, Early relationships rarely last long or become serious. If you allow your child small freedoms, you will help create an atmosphere of trust and respect. One thing I want to remember is this, like, these freedoms are, are comparative, right? And so if you have these rules and then you have, like, exceptions because of certain moments, like, that's going to feel like freedom. But also, like, our kid is going to be comparing their freedom with the freedom of their peers. And so just be aware of that. Like, that is their standard of parents who allow space to choose, right? Like, kids are talking about their parents because it's a huge effect on their lives. And so whatever your her friend group or his friend group has as, like, a typical rule setting... Like, that is what your child is comparing that to. And so even if you feel like you're giving your child freedom, it's possible that your child won't feel that way. 
And so I would make an effort to like find your balance independent of all these other individuals. But as your child gets freedom from you, like that feels like belief that like, hey, my parents believe in me. Staying closely involved in their activities can help take some of the forbidden excitement out of the relationship and redirect the focus to friendship and harmless flirty. The goal is to be involved. Um, even more than the goal is to change the behavior. Like if, if you get shut out as a parent, then almost there's a natural desire to do opposite of your value system. Um, but if you can stay involved, like that really helps a child to stay within the value system that you've established in your home. Um, I know that balance is hard, right? Because like here we want to stick to the rules that we've established, but more important than anything is an involvement in your child's life. And if your child starts to shut you out, then that becomes more dangerous than actually the rule setting, right? Um, because then a child really kind of leaves their values and the values of the home behind. This next part talks about group dating. Um, I think this rule that she sets, like a good rule of thumb, especially during the early teen years, is to ask that all group dating occurs in public places. I think dating in public is a really important pattern, right? Um, and even like the individual time is an important pattern that it's in public, right? Like I remember like having dates in college where it's like, hey, like I need to go grocery shopping. Do you want to come? And like, again, that public space brings a lot of freedom, right? And it's not this like stress and that stress usually leads to someone shutting down. Um, and that's the last thing we want in a partnership, right? And someone to feel unsafe. Um, I think it's important that you know the group because group dating can sometimes actually be harder to stay within the value system if the group has values that are outside of yours, right? And so being just because it's a group date doesn't always make it safer, right? Um, I want to read this statistic. This is a study by the U.S. National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University found that 58% of girls who had boyfriends that were at least two years older drank alcohol. So that's like 58% are drinking alcohol compared to just 25% of girls that did not date or dated boys that in their eight group, it was only 25% are using alcohol. So 58 versus 25. Similarly, 50% of girls who dated older boys smoked marijuana compared to 8% of the other girls. 65% of dating older boys smoked cigarettes compared to 14% of other girls. And these also lead to earlier sexual activity. Two-thirds of teenage moms in the United States were impregnated by men older than 20 years of age. Not that this is against the rules, right? Like, obviously, people mature at different levels. And the older that a person is, the more they have access to this kind of stuff. But it is important to be aware of. Right? Like there is risks in dating someone older, right? And I understand the appeal and like, but it is a little bit more dangerous. And I think as a parent, like it's important that you're aware of that and then that your child is aware of that, right? This isn't an opinion. This is a study that was done and it just is more dangerous. It's not saying that the answer is no, but it is a little bit more dangerous, right? One of the best ways to monitor your child's relationship is to get to know the person your child is dating. Taking an interest in his relationship will help your child feel more like an adult and may also encourage him to open up more about the relationship. Yeah, like, again, the more you can be involved, the more that child is going to feel confident in their ability to choose and that you believe in them, right? Um, I love this phrase that this mom says, you know, like, you know what, like, I believe in your choice and if you choose her, then I would love to get to know her you know, and like giving them that confidence that like, I believe in you. And that confidence sometimes helps a child to rise up and to become a little bit more as a chooser and to look for maybe a little bit more as a search for a partner. I like this phrase that, that they use as an example. I have noticed that you and Allison are spending a lot of time together. I would love to get to know her because she is such an important part of your life. Right? And then providing opportunities for them to come and have a fun time in your home. Right, When they're in your home, they feel your presence. And that presence really does affect the choice that they are making and the values that they have. In this next section on page 124, talking about monitoring time alone, it talks about how rules will shift 
based on how supervised they are. This is something that I think it's really helpful to like dictate for parents and for kids to know that like these are how our rules change versus how private your situation is, right? And I think that it's important for this progression to happen. Like even when we do tech, like we try to go down this progression where it starts with like supervised, like all the time we expect you to be in a public place when you're on a date. Second is like semi super supervised. This reminds me of like growing up, we had this like a uh, big TV room kind of in the in the basement but like it was attached to the hallway to walk downstairs and there was no door so like anyone who walked by was going to get like a little bit of a view of what was ever was going on in that room and so there was some level of privacy but like the door was open and so if someone walked by like it wouldn't be fully unsupervised and then finally is this like unsupervised right and setting rules based on those locations or like when you're ready to be in those locations, I think really helps a partner, uh, parents to establish rules for partnerships. One of these that's important is like driving, right? Like, and that's something I'd be looking for is like a child starts dating is like, are they driving by themselves, especially someone that they're dating consistently? Um, because that gives space for the alone time that they want. And like, is your child ready for that? I'm not saying it's bad, but is your child ready for that stage? On page 126, it talks about like setting physical boundaries, right? Um, but I, I want to I wanna read this section coming out of page 126. For many teenagers, their first romantic relationship does not just entail a first date or a first kiss. But it can be the first time they talk and share their private selves of themselves with someone outside of their close family. And that is a very emotional moment, right? And, like, the anxiety that happens before that and then, like, when it happens, like, there's a lot of emotional connection and sometimes baggage that can come from that first experience and the way that, like, I felt about myself when that first experience happened. Um, the next part is down at the bottom here. It says, if she or he isn't ready to have sex, then having sex isn't fair to either of them. And I think explaining to that really matters, you know, that like this is the damage and these are like what can happen to a relationship that has sex prematurely. Right. And I think as a parent, like that's my role is to be teaching that, especially in the younger ages where I can like teach my child that like these are the effects of having sex and I think the time to do that is pre 14 years old and if you can get that stuff taught before then it's not as much just based on um, that partner right we want the rule set so our child doesn't assume that this rule has to do with that specific um, partner Um, on page 128 it talks about like the levels of physical intimacy it actually goes through like the bases like first base second base third base fourth base Um, but there's a little piece here and I'm not going to go through all those bases, but like, I just want to hit this kind of piece here. Um, and like the feelings and that kind of stuff. This is in the section number two. Um, it talks about like what happens at first base. Um, it's the starting point for, um, physical intimacy and it has all these questions. And I love these questions just to like, as a child, like get their view on it. Right. And as a parent, like, what is your view as a partnership? Is it okay to kiss someone on the first date? Um, Do you, and like with that kiss, like, do you like this person? Do you think they like you back? Do you feel comfortable with this person? Do you trust this person and their intentions towards you? Are you willing to risk your feelings on a kiss with someone you don't know or trust you? Or are you ready for that risk? Right. And like helping a child to kind of know, like when emotionally is a kiss, am I ready to be physically intimate with someone? Like is really helpful. And like to even just like show a child a list like this, So they can have an idea of, like, how do I know when I'm ready? A lot of times people are assuming that kissing is just part of partnership relationships. And so they kind of just do it because they're in a partnership or they're interested in a partnership. And going through a list like this, like, do you like this person? Do you think they like you? Are you comfortable with this person? Like, do you trust this person and their intentions? Like, what is your commitment level with this person? Are you willing to risk your feelings on a kiss with this person? Right. And I think that helps a child to, again, draw a line for themselves of when they are ready for physical intimacy. On page 130, it talks about the first love. Um, It says here, your first love can be the model on which you fashion every future relationship. 
this first experience does give a standard. And it's really helpful for a child in close timing to having this first relationship, especially if it ends, to like consciously go through like, what about this relationship did I like? And what about it did I not like? Right. And being able to identify those qualities, not just that person really is helpful. Right. It's, it's awesome to go like, okay, like I dated so-and-so and I don't really, didn't really love that relationship as much as I like this one, but like why and what partnership things were going on. Um, I really like this example that's at the bottom of page 130, um, giving some examples of like how to converse about a topic like this and be involved in a relationship. Um, and we'll go through this. Um, she says, I noticed that you seem sad after talking to Laura. That reminds me of a time that I got in a fight with my first girlfriend. I was except for four days. I will never forget it. Awesome. Like, I especially love that they just, like, mention this story and, like, you can give your child space to ask about it without making it about you, but, like, just be a little empathetic and understanding that, like, hey, like, this is hard and I, I know this is hard and, like, I'm sorry for you. And that message really is respectful and helpful as a child and, again, ups their confidence that they can handle it. And, again, it allows that child to ask about that story, right? You just said, like, look... I got in a fight and we was upset for four days and like if they want to ask about it, they can ask about it. But I love as a parent a mentioning of a story instead of a word vomit story, right? Because as a parent starts to word vomit their story and tell their story that takes forever, kids typically just zone out and they no longer feel connected with. They no longer feel like you emotionally understand what they are going through. As we talk on page 132, the section is called Dealing with Heartbreak. And what a tough time, right? And like, what a time of vulnerability. And it's just hard for anyone to go through this like change, right? It's this like self-definement of this partnership. And now that partnership has ended, like it's heartbreaking. And it makes a child go to this, like, okay, like, who am I? Am I enough? Like all those questions start to come. One of the best things that you can do as a parent is by staying engaged, and just like be there for them. They don't they don't need a lesson. They don't need any of that. Like they're getting that on their own. Just being there and like helping them reaffirm that like, look, this is hard and it can be hard and allowing them space for it to be hard is really awesome. Um, on the other side of that is this like at the top of page 132, it says the good news about teen breakups is that they often do have a capacity to heal at a fast pace, provided there are other parts of life that keep your child busy and involved. And so I would just try to pretty quickly, like in the next couple days, like get back in the pattern of doing something and engaging in some other type of social activity or just an activity at all. And like that really helps a child to move on faster. Um, this breakup time is a time of real, real connection. There is kind of a couple phases to this breakup. There's this like initial portion, which is this like emotional weight. Then afterwards, there's this like reprocess of the partnership. Now that reprocess of the partnership, when your child starts doing that, like that's an awesome part to be involved in as a parent and not just to be in like, oh, Cody, he's dumb, but to like actually talk about the qualities of the relationship and the qualities of the person that you were attracted to and that maybe you would like to learn from. The final section of this chapter is entitled Encouraging Healthy Relationships. I love this like semi title that's just right underneath, right? This subtitle. As your child grows into adulthood, you will eventually need to allow her to make her own decisions regarding sex, love, and romance. Teaching early lessons about what it means to be in a healthy relationship is the best way to protect her future happiness. In addition, learning to support and accept her will help ensure your relationship is happy, loving, and honest. I love this truth. You know, this truth that like we need to give our child space for choice, like they are going to become a chooser. And the more that we can allow them to choose and fail in our home, I think that then prepares them to choose and fail and learn when they are no longer in our home. Um, I love this idea of teaching early lessons about what it means to be in a healthy relationship. I like to be verbal about stuff like that. It's like, oh, I really like that about their relationship, or I really like this about my relationship, or I like that about that relationship on TV, or like, yeah, anything like that really can reaffirm to our child, like, what we think a healthy relationship is. Like, just recently, I mentioned that, like, I was watching The Office, and, like, Pam and Jim are always, like, trying to experience whatever they're experiencing together, 
right? Like they see Dwight do something dumb and then they like kind of give this look to each other and like, hey, are you experiencing this with me? And that check-in is awesome. Like I want to be that way. Like I want to have a relationship where we're keep looking at each other and checking in and we're sharing life experience because that's what a partnership is, is a partnership is someone that you want to share your life with. Right. And I want to not only show that to my child, what a healthy relationship looks like, but also verbalize that like, Ooh, I like this. Right. Especially I like to say it in a way that like, I want to be better at this. Like I really like this about so-and-so's relationship and I want to get better at that. Right. And I think as I talk about that, like that can help my child to envision a healthy relationship and even envision a healthy relationship that's beyond my relationship. Like, yeah, I think my relationship is really awesome. But we're working at it and we're trying to get more and more connected. And I'm looking at others and talking, thinking ways that like I can be more connected to my partner and pointing that out to my child, I think can really help them um, to learn how to speak love and to learn what a healthy relationship really, really looks like. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Please share. Um, This really helps us to succeed as a community as you share information like this. And if you ever feel like you could use some individual help, please set up a free consultation. You can visit us at our website at trueconnectionsrecovery.com and set up a free consultation there. Thank you.